Now, welcome back to another episode of 100 Ways to Make 100K, the show where we're on the hunt to find 100 different ways to make 100 grand a month. Now, I'm really, really, really honored to introduce you to a very special entrepreneur, author, coach, podcast host. You'd never believe that she was a grandmother. Listen, her name is McKinney Smith, and I think you're going to love meeting her. So let's give her a moment to introduce herself. My name is McKinney, Rosa Bikini, <laughs> McKinney Smith. And I presently am a certified mindset coach for my mentor's company, uh, Procter & Gallagher, Bob Proctor's company. I host a podcast called the Heal Her Podcast, and I'm the author of five published books. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for uh, being so gracious with your time and coming to hang out with us for the day. Thanks I'm for really me. excited, really, really, really excited to dive into your story. And uh, so, you know, let's start with the first famous question. Do you remember the first time you made 100 grand in a year? Absolutely. So the first time I made 100 grand in a year, I think that was 2009, 2010. That was my first year in real estate. I had got my real estate license. I made zero dollars the first eight months. <laughs> And then the last four months of the year, I made 100K. Um, so I made more in that four months than the average realtor made like all year. Um, I had put in the work. I was doing open houses for other agents every week. I was putting out flyers. I was like in office doing office hours. And I was like, when is this going to pay off? And then it just started paying off deal after deal after deal. So here's the thing. So our our guests, okay, listen, I know you guys are tired of hearing real estate agents. Now, I didn't find McKinney as a real estate agent. So I would love to learn about what led you there. Because a lot of the ones that we talk to, they have like this crazy life before real estate. And then they're just like, no, fuck it. I'm going to be a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could take us back to kind of like your origin story on how you even became that. And I guess in turn, became to where you are now. Okay, so how I got into real estate? No, just like a little bit of your background first, you know? Like okay. who is the real, I want, listen, <laughs> I, want the okay. real, I okay. want the real McKinney, you know what I mean? Okay. Everybody gets to see you from the, you know, the purple, the purple screen on the background and you're always asking the questions, mm -hmm. but I don't know how often you're in the hot seat and uh, people really get to learn a little bit about you. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about your story. Okay, well, I'll go, I'll go way back. So I um, grew up in government housing to a single mom. And it was one of those areas where like all the moms looked after each other's kids. My mom was at work, working multiple jobs. You know, you're outside, um, you know, your lights are all, like street lights come on. My mom's still not home. I'm outside after hours. And I guess living in those type of areas, you see a lot. A lot of trauma, you know, a lot of people that I grew up with either on drugs, passed away, um, no longer with us. So my mother moved us out of government housing when I was about fifth grade, um, sixth grade. And I ended up getting pregnant at 17. Um, I had met my children's father when I was 15 and we were together for eight and a half years, but had um, two kids with him and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Mm. I had no idea what my future would look like. I had no, um, I'm gonna say examples, no form of uh, mentor or anything to look up to. Mm. So I just kind of like took it day by day. And then when we split, I met my ex-husband who is my son's father and he knew a lot about money. Um, he knew how to multiply money. He, in my eyes, was a hustler. You give him, you know, put him in the car industry, he's flipping cars. You put him in the real estate industry, he's flipping houses. Um, you know, he liked to gamble. So I think that's where my first, um, I guess, close access mm. uh, to money uh, came from. And because he had money, uh, when I got pregnant with my son, I didn't have to work. So I was a stay-at-home mom. So I was a stay-at-home mom for four and a half, almost five years. And when I decided to file for a divorce, because, you know, it wasn't exactly the healthiest relationship, mm -hmm. I was like, what could I do so that my kids could still have the same lifestyle, but I could still be a mother full-time? Mm -hmm. And that's how I got into real estate. Mm -hmm. I chose real estate because it allowed me the flexibility to still pick my own schedule, be there for my kids. Uh, you know, I brought them to open houses. Yeah. But it also uh, allowed me unlimited income potential. Mm. 
That's that's really cool. Yeah. And that's how you got there. That's how I got there. Now, how long were you a realtor for? Um, so I sold real estate full time for about six to seven years. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So literally from that one, that one kind of like exposure to money, it really kind of like opened your eyes to a whole new like world. How mm -hmm. did your, so what were some of the thoughts that you had after going from government housing, you know, being in like a low income environment where a lot of people are around you are in a certain kind of place mm -hmm. in their lives. And then all of a sudden seeing like this other side where you're like, whoa, you know, what were some of the differences um, that you noticed between one kind of world and the other world? Uh, well, let's, we'll start with stress levels. <laughs> um, you know, growing up in government housing, you're seeing a lot of people that are in survival mode. Um, yeah. They're just trying to make it to the next paycheck to, you know, pay the bills and keep insects out the house and, you know, yeah. that type of uh, mindset. You know, they're always watching their back and trying to make sure that they have just enough. Mm -hmm. And then being able to see the other side where it's like, you, know, you can travel whenever you want, drive what kind of car you want, do all these things. I was like, oh wow like mm -hmm. this is how the other side live yeah <laughs> yeah different yeah so how did how did kind of like the, your story unfold after that you know so you become a realtor for four or five years are you still a realtor i am day? absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> real estate was not for me okay um real estate was definitely not for me and i think i realized that when i connected with my mentor bob proctor mm. so the first year that i was in real estate i did really well the second year I was in real estate, I was on my way to making my next 100K, mm -hmm. and my sister passed away. Holy and goodness. when my sister passed away, my world shut down. Um, it was like my entire family shut down. She was like the hub of the family. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2012, and it was like I, I couldn't function. I gave away my clients you know, to my, my coworkers. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even answer an email. I wasn't mm -hmm. there mentally. Wow. And in my grieving process, I had so many people reaching out to me to say like, you know, your sister was always there for me. She showed up to my events and my family didn't. She would send me motivational quotes at night. She would send me positive YouTube videos. And I was like, wow, how do I want to be remembered? Wow. And real estate wasn't it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Real estate was not it. Although real estate was like helping people with, you know, one of the largest financial investments they may ever make. It was not it for me. Wow. And I thought the energy of real estate, a lot of, um, I'm going to say the people in the industry, very transactional. And mm -hmm. I'm a relationship person. Mm -hmm. So it it didn't excite me. Yeah. Um, I loved looking at houses. I loved helping people, but it didn't excite me. Mm -hmm. And in my healing process, uh, a friend of mine forced me to watch the documentary, um, The Secret. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I wasn't interested. I was so not interested. <laughs> I was like, okay. And the only thing I remembered from that was vision boarding. Mm. So I had made some vision boards, cut out some stuff. And I think I had just gotten back into the routine of uh, working in real estate after my sister passed when I went back to work. Yeah. And I was in the middle of a real estate deal. I was in the office in the evening and a complete stranger called my phone at the time. My number was on the internet. And he called and said that he had an opportunity for me. And I was like, buddy i'm busy i'm trying to close a deal right now yeah <laughs> he's like yeah you know i see all your positive quotes on on twitter um i'd love to invite you to meet bob proctor wow. so i thought this is a this is a scam this is a lie yeah um and i said send me an email i'm busy mm -hmm. he sends me an email mm -hmm. and it was a picture of him with his arm around bob proctor and i was like oh okay this might not be a scam yeah and he was inviting me to a hotel conference room in Toronto. Okay. And I ended up going. And everything that could possibly go wrong that day uh, went wrong from babysitter not showing up. I got lost, ran out of gas, you name it. Mm. But when I got there, Bob Proctor was at the door greeting people coming in. And I feel like that was the turning point for me where I was like, I'm done with real estate. I want to get into personal development. Mm -hmm. I heard him speak for less than an hour. And my mind was blown. And I was like, why doesn't everybody know this information? Mm. I want I want to take this information and bring it back to my community because yeah. we weren't taught these things. We mm -hmm. don't know these things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where my pivotal moment was from real estate to wanting to get into personal development. Yeah, my, my condolences for your sister, by the way. It's definitely Thank not you. easy. You know, I haven't, I haven't lost a sibling, right? But I, I, could, I can't even begin to imagine like what yeah. that that feels like you know yeah. especially someone that's the rock 
of your family and that close with you. Sorry, no. I, I'll I'll move on because I don't want to ruin your makeup and I know it's <laughs> gonna be a touchy subject. Yeah. But what were um, some of those thoughts around that time? Like as you moved, like I had lost my grandfather when I was working at the bank and he was my like one of my closest friends. You know, like we would go out for dinner all the time, like literally once a month for like the past two years right before he passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I, I remember working at the time and like I went in and it was just like, yeah, no, this is not it. I'm out. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And I had to take like a couple months leave. You know, and absolutely. Like, it was things that I couldn't even kind of package into words mm -hmm. and really even understand myself. And I still think it's something that I don't understand. Um, and it's like this constant. It, like you can't even describe it as searching because mm -hmm. like I'm not really searching for anything, but I'm just taking time to feel mm -hmm. and really embrace the, the memories that we did share. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm curious what that was like after, you know, especially being I'm trying to balance grievance with career and there's kids, three kids, that a dog, have, a mortgage. <laughs> yeah. There's like, there's like life shit happening. Yeah. Right. Part of my language. But like you've got life things that are going on and you're mm -hmm. still expected to function um, in a in a world where you have to eat what you kill, um, being real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to balance, you know, and then you find the secret when you're like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, what were some of the messaging that you heard? How were you internalizing that, some of that stuff? What did that manifest as <sighs> in real life? Wow, honestly. So I think losing my sister and I lost my grandmother the following year. My grandmother oh, helped smokes. raise me. So it was a, a deja vu situation. Mm -hmm. um, but losing them in that short period of time forced me to look at life differently. It made me look at what mattered, what didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And at the time previous, like I said, I didn't really know what I wanted out of life. I was mm -hmm. just going with the flow and learning through Bob Proctor, learning all those principles about being intentional, mm -hmm. about visualizing what you want, about the importance of like, you know, researching stuff and being detailed. It was like, it gave me purpose. And then I was able to like transmute my pain from my, my, my grief mm -hmm. into purpose. Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to teach this to other people. So mm -hmm. as I heal, I want to help other people heal. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I could have went in a completely different direction mm -hmm. because for the first six months after losing my sister, I was in such a deep depression. I, I, there were days I wasn't eating, but then having that purpose of helping other people out from their dark space, mm -hmm. it was like that vibration of, I guess, pulling people up to a happier space, pulling people up to mm -hmm. the light that actually gave me light, made me mm -hmm. feel like I had more purpose, made me feel like, okay, there's a bigger reason for me to be here. I'm going to do something with this. Like before that, I only cared about my kids, my family inside my house. And now it's like, no, no, no. You affect everything. Everything that we do affects everybody. Yeah. There's like, you know, what do they call it? The butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. You know, what happens on the other side of the world with the butterfly affects the temperature and like mm -hmm. every single thing that we do. So it made me realize like I am here for a purpose. I need to be intentional. There's, there is way more like it's not just about me mm -hmm. you know how am i contributing to this world not just to my household or my community mm. so it, it kind of opened up my eyes a lot <laughs> yeah and th that must have been partially confusing because you've got everybody in your life that's used to like this certain bikini that's already here mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you go to this freaking hotel seminar and this guy just tells you one thing and next thing you know like your whole life changes yeah and like your whole perception your whole vibration changes and people I'm really used to that, mm -hmm. you know, so what, how did things unfold after that? When you evolve, not everyone around you evolves at the same pace mm. and we attract what we're in harmony with. So as I started to evolve and as I started to become more aware and as I started to gain knowledge and be less ignorant, those who were not interested in that stuff, their perspective because healed people hear differently, they they see differently. Mm. It was like, oh, the perception from other people was, oh, you think you're too nice, you think you're better than. So you end up, I don't wanna say losing people because I don't feel like I've lost anything. Yeah. You end up disconnecting from what is no longer in alignment with you. Mm. Um, and it's hard at first as you evolve, because you're like, well, I've known this person for so long. But then you realize that the length of time 
doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Um, and I've made some amazing connections as I've evolved um, that like, I don't, I don't feel like I, I take these people to the grave with me because that mm -hmm. connection is so deep. Like maybe mm -hmm. the previous connections I had were more shallow. Yeah. Um, so I think it's also taught me to let go. Hmm. Um, I feel like we have this attachment to people hmm. and to things. And for me, connection versus attachment, you know, attachment is like unhealthy and connection is like yeah. healthy. It's good for you. Now, why did that lesson mean so much to you at the time? It sounds like there were stuff that you might have been attached to that you might have been connected to where that that difference might have meant a lot. You yeah. know, like I go to some of these things and the lessons that they say, like you, everybody, everybody listens to the same message, but takes away something different. Mm -hmm. Right. And usually you take away something that is impactful to you. Mm -hmm. um, so what was happening in your life at the time that that was the lesson that meant so much? It was losing people or disconnecting from people that I never thought I would disconnect from. Mm -hmm. People that I thought would be around forever. Mm -hmm. Family, friends, business relations. It mm -hmm. was like, if you would ask me a year before, I'd be like, yeah, these people are gonna be in my life forever. Mm -hmm. And you know, understanding reason, season, or lifetime, it was like, okay, they've served their purpose. Mm -hmm. They've helped me get to the next level, the next realm they're doing their thing i'm doing mine there's no bad blood there's no animosity we just no longer align mm -hmm. wow yeah. that must have been that must have been heavy to realize yeah, yeah. <laughs> it still is i'll be honest yeah. with you it still is but it's yeah. the awareness of it the understanding of it mm -hmm. um makes it easier to let go so now you go through this uh hotel experience walk into the hotel you come out a different person right <laughs> absolutely <laughs> girl you want to come to my home? no not like that <laughs> so you walk out this different person mm -hmm. and then what happens in your life how does life unfold after that what 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 period of time is this sir um so this was uh 2013 so my okay. sister died 2012 i met bob proctor around 2013 mm. um so i met his wife and his daughter around the same time cool so um, he, he passed recently right yes he passed uh so just over a year ago but okay yeah yeah um so his wife linda mm -hmm. was at that same um, event and i typical introvert went in saw a bunch of people talking and went and sat at a table by myself and you know this older lady comes over and a brown lady comes over and they sit at the table with me and i'm trying to mind my own business head in my phone and the older lady starts talking to me asking me questions about my story about what i do mm -hmm. so i'm telling her thinking okay so she's like, oh, wow, you have such an inspiring story. You need to tell my husband. And I'm like, who's your husband? She turns around. She's like, Bob. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly the person that I was trying to avoid. Right. I'm just here like for the coffee. You know? Yes. Yeah. So um, wow. she ends up connecting me to her husband. Mm. She goes up to the front of the room to introduce him. And uh -huh. she says, before I bring up my husband, she starts telling the room about me. So wow. I wanted the floor to open up and swallow me. Cause I'm like, I don't like eyes on me. Yeah. Introverted. Eh? Look at you. <laughs> heavily, you. heavily. Uh -huh. I've, I've evolved a little bit, but still heavily introverted. Okay. Um, but I ended up staying connected with them. So, um, his wife, Linda ended up giving me her cell phone number. Mm -hmm. We start going for coffee. Um, at the time she was with a particular network marketing company. Okay. And of course they're always looking to grow their team. Mm -hmm. I had never, like been a part of anything like that, didn't know anything about it, but I understood the environment mm -hmm. that it allowed me access to. So I had joined her team at the time okay. and being a part of her team, you get free coaching and mentorship from Bob. Yeah. <laughs> and so at this time, where temperature check me, where are you at with real estate? You're like over it, you're realizing So that I am I am so over you, it but still have my license. Yeah, because you got an email and it's the email like you don't <laughs> tell, right? So like Yes. Uh -huh. So I'm I'm mentally over the industry. Okay. And at the time I was working on my first book. Okay. And so I was trying to figure out how to get out of real estate. Mm. So when I start connecting with Bob, his wife, his daughter, and realizing that there's opportunities out there that I have access to, mm. that's when I was like, Oh, I could actually pivot here. I don't need to stay in real estate. So um, staying connected with them, learning about networking and residual income and multiplying what I have and yeah. um, you know, tapping into your resources taught me 
I guess, way more than I had learned all the years that I was in real estate. Now, how did you like how easy or how difficult was it to drop the thing that you thought was going to be, you know, the thing for a while? Right. Because like your identity was probably wrapped up in real estate. My identity was wrapped up in real estate. But because I had just started getting back into it after Mm -hmm. taking that time off from grieving, Mm -hmm. it was like, "Mm, I don't know if I'm feeling this anymore. You know, I was already in that mindset of like this is not fulfilling my purpose. Mm. I don't think this is what I'm meant to do with my life. Okay. Like, I think when I got into real estate, knowing that I could make that income, I enjoyed it because I loved open houses. I loved looking at model homes. I was like, I probably like should have went into interior design. That's what I was really into. <laughs> I mean, you, you styled yourself today? Yes, sir. I think you did. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll let you style my living room. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I was already mentally checked out. Okay. So it was easier for me. Like even when mm-hmm. I was advertising that my book was coming out, everyone's like, oh, you wrote a real estate book? I'm like, oh, my book has nothing to do with real estate. Yeah. <laughs> nothing to do with real estate. So it was, this, was this the first thing out? So you joined the network marketing thing and then you write a book. Um, so I was already writing the book at, at the time. Okay. Um, I was coming close to like just about publishing it there. Mm. Um, so Bob's wife ended up writing the forward for that book. Oh, no way. Yes. Wow. Um, so then I had the book launch book came out and I realized, oh, OK, there's an avenue here of even just telling my story mm. that I'm monetizing, you know, getting speaking engagements and mentorship opportunities and doing workshops. So I had a girlfriend who was a leadership coach and she was like, you can't walk away from real estate until this like supplements that income Mm -hmm. i mean i'm a bit of a daredevil if you tell me i can't do something and you say watch me so i didn't take her advice Mm -hmm. (laughs) i was like yep i'm parking my real estate license i'm done here i'm gonna see if i can make this work because i don't want to do this anymore yeah and i did and what was that like because my or are you not are you not afraid like you've got three you got three kids that you're supporting like there was you got a fear mortgage to there. deal with you got yes. all the stuff <laughs> that's going on right and you're like yeah okay fuck it. i'm gonna write a book and i'm gonna just be that girl like that's it there was definitely that fear there but i think because even at the time when i filed for my divorce mm. i was a stay-at-home mom i had mm. no stable income mm. i had a mortgage to pay kids to feed dog car payment, all these things. Mm -hmm. And I'm leaving the person in the relationship that is making all the income. Mm. That was like a huge step. It was already scary, Yeah. but I was doing it. I was like, okay, well, if I can handle that, I'll figure it out. Mm. So when I decided to leave real estate, I was like, I'll figure it out. Mm. And that was probably that, that, that first leave was probably way scarier than the, than the real estate leave. Yeah. 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 Wow. So what did the, how did writing a book, change well first before we even get into that what what was this maybe you could give us a little synopsis of the book, okay you know give us the front page back page you know got you got yeah. you okay so the first book it's called a walk of my stilettos how to okay. get through the struggle with grace okay <laughs> and it was really sharing my story of mm. you know how i went from growing up in government housing to now you know being a real estate agent um <laughs> That's monetizing you know residual income stuff like that yeah so um each chapter was like a different phase in my life but different steps um giving tools and yeah. resources on how you can get through what you're going through okay yeah cool and so how did writing a book change change your life assuming that it changed your life you know, it did actually you know. um so a when i my part. i'm sorry <laughs> that's but, all good yeah, yeah, yeah so when i first published the book um i probably had a bit of a heart attack because i was like what did i just do i just put all my personal business into a book and said to the world here you go mm-hmm. um so i had a bit of a panic attack and yeah, vulnerable it was very very vulnerable mm-hmm. and then people started reaching out from different countries Wow. I was getting Different women. Countries. Yeah. I was getting women from Australia reaching out saying like, this is my story. I was getting women from the States. Again, my number was still on the internet. Women calling me saying like, can you come here and speak? Wow. You know, I've asked my, my leader, my boss to have you come and speak. So opportunities started opening up because mm. I shared my story. Wow. So I was like, oh, okay. This is not that bad after all. Mm-hmm. And then I started getting like more and more messages about how my story was similar to theirs Mm. or how what I had gone through had Mm. helped them get through something. 
Um, I had women telling me that my, my book got them through chemo, like wow. all of these stories of the impact that it was making mm -hmm. completely shifted wow. my perspective. And what were some of those, um, kind of nuggets, if you could give us some cold notes from, was it the story that you shared so far about sister passing away, grandmother passing away, coaching? I guess the coaching probably wasn't in it. Um, the coaching came into play at the end. So like the, the last part of the book was where I, you know, learned about mentorship through one of my other mentors, Carlin. So it shout out, shout out, Carlin. shout out, Carlin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the book is parts that I've talked about, but mm -hmm. it gives like the different tools and resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I'm excited. To, I'm excited to dive in. Do you think a guy like me would? would Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I had many men tell me that they would be at work and have like a newspaper or another book on the outside because okay. the cover of the book used to have a stiletto on it. Okay. <laughs> so I I redid the book so it's got. I mean, it's more 20, 20, universal. Yeah, I guess right? I have to walk in stilettos too, right? <laughs> do I whatever you want. Anything, that anything you want. is possible. <laughs> it's it's really cool to see how the the book almost drove a community around you absolutely it you did so it did what okay keep i'm i'm like on the edge of my seat right now like i'm <laughs> loving this this is so cool like i'm i'm like getting like a front front row seat like i'm like courtside to mckinney's <laughs> life right now you know so yeah. what ends up happening after this book after you join this network marketing company like everything's probably changing everything was changing um, I started meeting other people. Like I started meeting other authors that were giving me other op like opportunities to go and speak and share. Mm -hmm. And so I started speaking at events in different countries and doing book signings in South Africa. And like wow. I was getting all these opportunities, but because I was around a community of people that were doing the same thing, mm -hmm. they were showing me more that I could do. So mm -hmm. it was like the more that I opened up to what was happening, yeah. I was attracting more opportunities, more resources. Energy. Exactly. Um, so it it just, I don't even know if I have the words right now. It, it completely shifted my identity. Hmm. It completely shifted my belief in what is possible. Hmm. Um, you know, sometimes you read about things or you see a quote and you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But actually living it and experience it, I was like, Definitely. oh, this is real. Yeah. This is real. Yeah. Swimming yeah. is way different than talking about swimming. Absolutely. You know, like the the ocean is way different from the shore than actually being in the water. Like completely. Yeah. How did that feel? Like having the ground shift underneath you, like all this change all at the same time, you know, still a mother at this point. Right. Like how old are your kids at this time? Um, when I first got into real estate, my eldest was 12 okay. and my son was about four. Wow. So they were still pretty young. So you're still doing this as full time mom. Yes. Is, girl, that's the dirt <laughs> off your shoulders one time. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is crazy. Like, yeah. what's driving all this? And why do you work so hard? Funny you say that. I had someone say, maybe after the second book came out, you know, why do you work so hard? Mm. And back then, it was after my sister had, had passed, and it was like, you know, I'm doing this for my kids. Mm. I'm doing this for my legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to leave something better behind for them. Mm -hmm. And then... If you ask me that now, especially because I feel like I've shifted from that hustle mentality to like rest and connection and mm. peace, mm. I don't think I hustle that hard anymore mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> um, but what I when I do put in the work, it's about impact. Mm. It's about how I'm making other people feel and that domino effect of healing mm. generations. Wow. Yeah. It's deep. Yeah. So okay. So keep keep going with this story right here. I'm I'm like fully engaged. I'm intrigued. I'm locked in right now. This might be a long podcast. I don't care. Okay? But, yeah. Let me hear. So um. Okay. So then after the first book, so I ended up releasing almost almost uh, a book a year after okay. that. Okay. So the second book ended up coming about because, like, having so many messages of people saying like, "You went through all this stuff. How are you still so positive? Mm. Like, I don't understand." And it was like shout out Bob Proctor, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bob Proctor. Um, it was definitely prayer and affirmations. Then. Okay. So that's when I came up with the second book, which is 111 affirmations to help you heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 and 111 affirmations to help you heal. Yes. So, so what you you read in some of these affirmations every morning? Is that kind of like the routine that you're in at this point? It was definitely the repetition of mm. affirmations every single day, and. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't believe in affirmations before. Okay. And then through meeting Bob Proctor and understanding repetition and how we can actually change like what we believe through the subconscious mind because okay. it doesn't know the difference between fact or fiction. Mm. You tell yourself a lie often enough, you'll actually start to believe it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so it was learning to shift my mindset, learning to shift my belief. So what are some of those affirmations on your list now? Um, my favorite is I'm rich in, in relationships and love mm. because I know majority of the population is thinking about finances and being rich financially. Yeah. But when you have relationships and love, mm -hmm. yeah, you're yeah. extra rich. <laughs> yeah. What's richer than, you know yes. what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's crazy. I heard someone say you solve all the problems that money can solve until you're left to solve problems that money can't solve something along those lines. And it's like, Shit, like there are problems in life that exist after the Absolutely. financial. But it, you know what's crazy about that? Like you don't really see the problems that finances can't solve until you don't have as many finance problems mm -hmm. at this at this time, right? So, mm -hmm. do you remember the first time you made a hundred grand in a month? Yes, actually, it was a couple years ago. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, where where is it in reference to the story that we're so at right now? The, so you this multiple was books. this is, uh this was just before book five book five okay yeah. so then let's not go into the month yet keep telling me the story up to that point okay, okay. yeah so 111 affirmations drops yeah you're going around the world how did you even get people around the world to read your book like people would drop stuff all the time and no and, and <laughs> i guess like three likes right like nobody sees i have stuff. no idea i'll be honest with you mm. i have no idea because when i when i dropped the first book mm -hmm. I didn't have that many followers on Instagram. Like yeah. it was just people finding me online. Wow. Um, people finding me through Facebook, through Instagram, through Twitter. Mm. Like I, people have a lot of negative things to say about social media and social media, yes, can be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But I think depending on what you're using it for and depending mm -hmm. on um, how you utilize it. Yeah. And I, as an introvert, you know, not comfortable being around a lot of people i make sure that my one-on-one -on -one interactions are like super strong mm. so even if i'm meeting someone online in dm we're communicating on a regular building rapport taking that offline mm. so i was making connections and then internationally it was like if people were coming to toronto hey i'm going to be in toronto let's have lunch if i was traveling to another country hey i, he I hear you're coming to amsterdam let's have lunch mm -hmm. so it was building those international connections that i guess opened up a lot of extra doors yeah, yeah um and i guess it's it's way easier than freaking picking up the call picking up the phone and saying hey you want to sell your house <laughs> like, it's yes. like you're doing this awesome thing <laughs> online like i would love to learn more about it yeah yes way different yeah. tone of conversation completely okay. more connection than transaction mm -hmm. yes 100 yeah. percent. and i think it's at like the root of everything. So I've been struggling a lot with this show because it's it's so money oriented, mm -hmm. but the whole nature of the conversation isn't isn't money. Like it's about connection and I, I don't like how shallow it is. So once we find the hundred ways, mm -hmm. I think I might pivot into something, mm -hmm. which I'd love to talk about because you pivoted the whole name and brand of your show, right? Yep. But we'll we'll get there. We'll get <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. So 111 affirmations. You you're making friends all over the world as a result of this thing. Yes. Then. And then people are asking for more tools. Mm. So um, Bob Proctor is big on actively practicing gratitude. Mm. So I created a gratitude journal. Okay. Um, similar to the the five minute uh, journal, whatever you call it, but it's. Um, like writing down in the morning the five things that you're actually grateful for, giving okay. you instructions on not just like, I don't know, I'm grateful for getting up this morning. Well, yeah. why are you grateful for getting up this morning? Mm. Or if I say I'm grateful for my children, why am I grateful for my children? Um, connecting it to an actual feeling. Mm. Um, walk us, hold on, walk us through that practice and give us a little bit of like an example. You know, I'd love for someone to walk away with something that they can do yeah. as a result of this. Yes. Um, instead of just like, hey, listen to our conversation. It's a great conversation. We got to hang out with Mikini. Like, yes. awesome. But like, give us a give us a tactic. Absolutely. You know, something that I could do or our guests or our audience, you know, our community can do today. Yeah. That might change their life for the better. Okay, absolutely. So with gratitude, if you're going to actively practice gratitude, it's got to be connected to feeling, emotion, mm -hmm. your subconscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. So emotion, it's energy in okay. motion, okay. right? Ooh. <laughs> 
So if you think about something that you are grateful for right now, okay. connect that to an emotion. Mm. Whether you think about your parents, your loved one, if you think right now, why am I grateful for that person? It evokes feeling within you, right? Mm -hmm. So you're basically changing the vibration that you're on. Mm -hmm. Let's say you were sad right now. And if I'm thinking about my partner, why mm -hmm. am I grateful for my partner? Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for my partner because I feel safe with him mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. Mm -hmm. That lifts my vibration, mm -hmm. right? So actively practicing gratitude and connecting it to an emotion. Mm -hmm. When you're raising your vibration, mm -hmm. um, how do, how do I simplify this? Your don't feel the need to. Okay, don't, don't need <laughs> so your simplify. your yeah. vibration is just um, so your feelings mm -hmm. are labels for the vibration that you're on. Mm. So if I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, that's low vibration. Mm. If I'm happy, I'm excited, that's high vibration, mm. right? So the point is to get you on a high vibration because that's when we're attracting the good things, right? Mm. Okay. So actively practicing gratitude, mm. connected to an emotion. Think about it, visualize the feeling, the person, the thing. Mm. Um, so that's what lifts you. Um, and it'll give you more things to be grateful for because you're in alignment. Yeah. Um, and it's keeping you on a high vibration. Cool. Well, back to center. Okay. So yeah. 111 <laughs> affirmations. Yes. Then, then the gratitude journal. Then the gratitude journal. And yeah. then the fourth one was the couple's gratitude journal. Okay. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So if you're in a relationship with someone, you guys get the journal, um, you know, one side for the male, one side for the female or whichever. They, them, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whoever the people whoever are in the relationship are. You are in the relationship. Yeah. And it's, yes, what you're grateful for, um, but then also what things about your partner are you mm. grateful for? Mm. Because sometimes we're in a relationship with someone and you just get into the monotony of the routine and mm. you're forgetting to appreciate each other mm. you're forgetting to build that connection so it's mm. keeping you on the same page literally why did you create this you know because uh yeah <laughs> so you're so the first one you're not creating just because you're like mm, that's gonna be a great idea like you're creating for yourself like let's face it you know yes. a walk in my stilettos is not a walk in javon stilettos it's not a walk in lee stilettos this is a walk in bikini stilettos yes they're like yo you gotta feel what i'm going through for a second i, I hear stilettos are are rough on the ankles you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes so this gratitude journal you must have been the affirmations you must have been affirming some stuff this must yes. have been something that you were going through at the time Absolutely. gratitude journal must have been something that you're going through at the time couples Absolutely. now i know you talk about relationships on your podcast so if you want to dive into relationships by all means usually we just talk about the relationship of money but i would love for you to uh let me share something so so there's there is this one belief that i that i learned about um different personality types and it's pace p-a-s-e Practical, action, social, emotional. And we all have all of them mm -hmm. at the same time. But there's usually two that are more dominant, two that are less dominant. Now, practical, let's say, let's give an example of we're going to the store to buy a, a, a bottle of water, right? The practical person might make a decision based on, hmm, okay, 500 milliliters for $2 or a liter for $3. I'm going to get the liter because it's more of a bang for my buck. Practical decision. Action would be like, oh, let's just go right now. Let's just grab it right now. And I'm sure there's people in your life that you're like, yo, let's go to the store. And they're like, when? And you're like, right now. And they're like, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now the social is, mm, who's drinking this type of water and who's drinking this type of water? Like I saw my favorite celebrity drinking this type of water. Everybody else is drinking this type of water. I'm going to go with this type of water. Like who drinks this on here? <laughs> <laughs> For example, right? Mm -hmm. And then the emotional person might be like, mm, but this one's cold and this one's warm. How would the cold make me feel? Right, I'm really connecting with this water because yep. I'm feeling this. Like, <laughs> That's me. <laughs> just, just as an example, right? So like you're E first, for, yep, for instance. Me, I'm P first. I'm like straight practical. Like I'm like, okay, like, I don't care if it's warm, hot, cold. I don't give a damn who's drinking it. It's $3 for a liter. I'm copping that. Yeah. Better deal, right? And this this framework will help you kind of understand uh, people and their decision making they were using it in like a sales reference. So they're like, make sure you include all of these in your email copy or whatever, right? So yeah. that you could hit all the different types of people. Um, but it sounds like a lot of your decision and the way that you move and communicate are through E first, yes. emotion first. Yes, you I'm know? an empath. 
an empath. All the way. That, that's what you see. Exactly. You have a yeah. whole identity for it. Now, I'm not that, <laughs> but I would love to try and engage a conversation in that. So can you walk me through the E side of what you were going through as you were creating this? Yes. Okay. I'm trying. Okay. I got you. I got yeah. you. Okay. So <laughs> I am an empath. Mm. Um, I am also what's called an HSP. So it's like a highly sensitive person. Okay. Um, so basically there's like depth of um, not just emotion, but like feeling like mm. I'm hypersensitive to, to light, to mm. touch, to all of those things. Okay. Um, so I function with a lot of emotion. Okay. But I also understand that emotions are fickle. They come and go. Mm. So although I function primarily with emotion, mm. I look at practicality and action. Okay. I could care less for the social part. See? So, yeah. Okay. So you got your primary. The rest are all yeah. done with. Well, yeah. and you know social is last. The other two might change. Yeah. Okay. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. So uh, where are we? Book four? Sure. Before, during, after. I mean, it's it life's, life's about the journey, right? So, yes. You know. Okay. So... I guess both um, for the gratitude journals, the regular one and the mm. uh, couples journal, mm. definitely in an emotional state, but learning to, I don't want to say, um, well, maybe to, learning to regulate my emotions. Yeah. But at the same time, every time I learn something, my objective is to be able to teach it to somebody else. Mm. I don't want to learn something and keep it to myself. Mm. So once I learn to understand gratitude, hmm. okay, how can I teach this to as many people as possible? One to many, right? Yeah, yeah. So I put it in a book. Okay. So the same with the uh, couples journal. Unfortunately, it was the original idea of it was given to me by the ex that I was with. Um, but he was like, have you ever thought about doing a couples journal? And I was mm. like, no. Mm. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe you should since you're so focused on this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I did. So that is how that came about. But it was from wanting deeper connection with a wow. partner because I, I feel like people who are empaths or HSPs, it's very hard to find that depth in a relationship that yeah. we need to be satisfied. Maybe a mm. regular person is okay with superficial stuff. Yeah. But for my, I'm going to say, um, I guess it's a need. Mm -hmm. well, not a want it is a need mm -hmm. um of wanting that deeper connection so i guess that couple's gratitude journal came from trying to build a deeper connection what do you wish your partner asked you you know to to spark that deeper connection you know because usually every, everything starts with a conversation but the quality of your life is dictated by the quality of the questions that you ask and oftentimes you can't really get deeper unless you have the tools to mm -hmm. use, right? And like, if everything looks like a hammer, you're not gonna be able to crack the sensitive side, let's be real, yep. right? So you might need an L file, you might need, you know, something a little bit more precise than uh, what's up, right? Yep. Or what are you thinking about right now? You might need something a little bit, a different tool in order to crack that side of an empath, mm -hmm. especially if it's someone that you don't really connect that, that, that your love language isn't the same language or you respond to things in the same way or a different way that they do. Mm -hmm. So what what's a question that you wish um, your current partner or maybe a previous partner would have asked you? Or what is a question that we can ask to go past level one, level two, maybe to crack the core? That's interesting you ask that because like my ex and my present partner are complete polar opposites. Mm -hmm. um, my present relationship like when I was giving the example of gratitude where yeah. I feel safe in yeah. this relationship, um, I feel like this present partner understands my personality and makes me feel safe being who I am. Mm. I don't have to put up any extra walls or layers or pretend to be who I'm not. Mm. So whether it be business, whether it be personal, whether it be between us or family, mm -hmm. He knows that I am sensitive, mm. so there's no shame in me being sensitive. Mm -hmm. So he, his automatic already knowing that I'm sensitive. How are you feeling right now? Mm. What can I do right now to make you more comfortable? Mm. Simple questions. He asks. Mm. It's it's almost like second nature, and sometimes I'm like I'm okay because he does it so often. <laughs> where I'm like I don't want this to get annoying. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love and appreciate you, mm -hmm. but he is. Um, mindful mm. of my sensitivities mm. whereas previous relationships oh you're too sensitive it's so annoying 
Yeah, that doesn't make Very you different. jealous. Heard. Yeah, That's not for at all. Sure. Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. fine. Let me get my journal so I can take some <laughs> damn notes, lady. <laughs> All right. And it's yeah. as simple as that. Like, that's it. Simple. Yeah. Because simple. I guess that question will lead into whatever, whatever it is that it needs to. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Got it. No yeah. notes taken. Too. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Got it. No yeah. notes taken. Yeah. You know, I'm sure we got some gems. I'm sure there's going to be people <laughs> like mm, on that one, you know, yeah. so we'll make sure we cut that. Cause that's <laughs> your page, you know? <laughs> All right. So now you drop a couple's journal. Mm -hmm. You said you mentioned there were five so far. I think yeah. that only makes us so that's four. four. Yeah. Okay. So um, right before my mentor passed away, mm. um, I was COVID time. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So I had uh, partnered with uh, one of Bob's top proteges. Um, okay. Her name's Susanna Mihailovic. She's from Australia. Shout out, Susanna. Um, yes. So her and I started partnering together to do some coaching. Okay. And in doing so, it was a lot easier to make the 100K month. Hmm. Um, not only did it help me tap into a community of people that I probably would not have been able to tap into, hmm. but she was actually able to help me, I'm gonna say, uh, crack the surface with people that I had been trying to get as clients. Okay. Um, it's almost like, how do I say this? Sometimes the black community We'll see someone in the community doing something, but it's like, oh, that's just so and so, right? They they know you as a certain person, or um, their perception of you is at a certain place. Mm -hmm. But then they see you connect with someone that they feel is successful, that they feel mm -hmm. is doing the big things, mm -hmm. and that person may not be a person of color. Yeah, and you partner with that person, and they're like, oh, well, if they validated you. I can work with you now. Uh -huh. So I had a lot of that. Okay. Um, so in doing so, because um, when you're coaching with Bob Proctor, it's considered like premium coaching. Mm. So let's say for regular, I don't know, coaching certification is like four thousand mm. dollars. Ours was twenty. Oh wow. So um, our services yeah. that we offer, if we are doing individual or even for corporate. The price tag may be a little higher. It has Bob's 60 years of uh, experience, uh, like social proofing. He's he's yeah. proved that it works. Yeah, he's got the success principles that he has proven through, you know, other organizations or other people mm -hmm. that it's worked over and over mm. and over again without fail if you follow it. Mm. So it has that behind it. So we're 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 teaching the same principles. Cool. Um, so we were able to have. Um, pretty big months you know we were we created a private community people who were interested wow. in this were providing a lot of value to this community and then mm. it's like well who is now interested in um you know coaching with us yeah so it's like if you have a thirteen thousand dollar coaching program and you just get a couple of people in one month you've got your 100k yeah so yeah. this is what's the format of this coaching program like uh, private community video lessons and like coaching yeah so um there's there's different formats but what we had done originally yeah. we created the uh, private community um people that were in, within that community they mm -hmm. got weekly lives from us together and then individual ones of us um you know providing tips mm -hmm. and, and tools um, we were regularly putting out like newsletters and stuff like that cool. so um we collaborated on coaching clients and then we collaborated on the fifth book cool. and then um we'd actually when the book was done we sent an email to bob asking him if he would write the forward and then we're like how can we haven't heard back we would have heard something back by now even if it was a no and then we got the word that he had passed away Damn. so we put everything on pause because yeah. we we're also grieving the loss of our mentor yeah and then My condolences. Um, thank you and then his son um ended up writing the forward for that book nice yeah. So what did uh what are some of like your favorite maybe like lessons or I I don't want to call them lessons right but favorite all right let's call them tools okay. right what are some of your favorite coaching tools that you like to resort to and what type of coaching is this is this like how do I get more sales is this how do I market better is this how do I just connect with my partner better like what type of coaching is this so it's it's considered personal and business development okay um. Because people try to separate the two. Um, but if you're going to evolve as a person, 
yeah. <laughs> they connect, right? So uh, interesting enough, I was in a Facebook group years ago for entrepreneurs, mm. um, you know, uh, I guess high income earners. And there were a lot of people that were basically saying like they hate seeing all the positive quotes and things like that out there. To them, it was fluff. Mm -hmm. And learning through Bob that if your mindset, you know, isn't evolving, if you're not working on yourself as a person, mm -hmm. then that limits how much you can do in business. 100%. So it's it's connected, um, you know, even in terms of like leadership, people will often complain to me when they work in a nine to five about the type of boss that they have. They have a boss. They don't have a leader, right? Mm. Um, being an effective leader, leading from the front, leading mm. by example, doing the actual work, not just telling people what to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, leading and building people up, not trying to get people to think higher of you, but mm. to think higher of themselves, mm. building more leaders. Mm. I think there's, there's so many different lessons in what i've learned from bob that we were able to put into that that fifth book yeah um i think one of the the bigger things that i use on a daily basis is uh the goal setting okay. i'm 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 someone who is goal driven i okay. need a goal okay i need something to work towards mm -hmm. um and he broke down i guess my belief on goals and goal setting you know we've wow. been taught smart goals okay you know the specific measurable all that stuff and he kind of slows it out the window and it's like you need to set goals that are so big they scare the crap out of you there has mm. to be that emotional connection mm. um so we break them down to like abc goals okay your a goals are goals that you already know how to do okay um so for me an a goal would be to write a book if i say i'm going to write a book that's an a goal Okay. I already know how to write a book. Yeah. Um, a B goal is something that you think you can do, but we call them circumstantial goals. Okay. There's no growth in a B goal. They're linear goals. So it's like um, you can, I don't know, you can buy another property if this and this and this lines up, but you know that that's going to line up eventually, mm -hmm. right? So that's a B goal. And then your C goals are like your fantasies, things you have no idea how you're going to accomplish them. But in your spirit, you're like, I'm doing this. Like, if you want to say that you're going to be the best videographer in the world or whatever it is, or you're going to win some award mm -hmm. globally for whatever, you have no idea how that's going to happen. You have yeah. no idea how that's going to line up. Okay. But you have your eye on that prize and you're going after it. Yeah. So once you've taken that fantasy and you're like, am I willing? Mm -hmm. Am I willing to do what it takes to get here? Yeah. Am I able? Am I physically able? Am I mm -hmm. mentally able? If mm -hmm. you can say yes to those two things and you've now taken that fantasy and you've turned it into a possibility. Mm -hmm. Once you're, you work from that possibility, you can make that a reality if you just work towards it. So, so what, what are yours? Is it too personal? <sighs> that might be a little personal. Really? You know what? If you had asked me that question five years ago, okay. I would have blurted it out no problem. Yeah. I have learned so much about energy okay. and people blocking energy and not realizing because I used to be so naive and just like, yeah, everyone's good. Everybody's good. Yeah. Had some experiences where okay. I'm like, people can be malicious mm -hmm. secretly behind you. Like there's so many things. So now anything that I am Personally. super passionate about, like I want to nurture that. It's yeah. like, you know, like the first three months of a pregnancy where you're like, yeah, you don't want to tell anybody yet because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. That's how I am with like those things. Okay. Still newly pregnant. With yeah. the, with the <laughs> no problem. No, hey, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be that way with the seedling too, right? Like yeah. when you first, when you're first sprouting, like you, it's, it's extra sensitive, you yeah. know, until it's ready to stand on its own. So I completely, I completely get it. I completely respect it. Yeah. Um, so now where does the podcast come into play? So you run this podcast, you're a podcaster. You just had your five year anniversary. Congrats, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. You know, thank you. Um, so the podcast actually started as a spinoff from the first book. Okay. So it was originally called The Walk of My Stilettos. Right. Um, and it was just sharing other women's stories of resilience. Mm. Um, because after the book and understanding how important our stories are, mm -hmm. I was like, I want to tell the stories of these women who people may assume that their life is perfect. Mm. People may assume that, oh, because they're successful, they don't have any hardship. Mm. And you speak to these women who people, you know, may idolize or think that they're untouchable or that their life is unattainable and mm -hmm. realize they've been through some stuff. Mm -hmm. They have like 
had to get back up how many times yeah. they have had to push through those adversities yeah. so it's not like they're not just like you and me they mm. have come from the same place or lower mm -hmm. but here is what they had to do to get there here's what they had to push through wow. um so that's where the show started mm. um and then uh i guess after book number five okay um when i really started to dig deep into my own healing mm. we're on a deeper level where it's like yeah i'm in personal development i'm learning how to thrive and push things towards mm -hmm. the future mm -hmm. but there are blockages okay. there are things that i don't understand okay and then getting into therapy and realizing we're all walking around with our childhood wounds childhood traumas okay as adults trauma responses yeah. we don't realize why we do the things that we do well it's because of our programming from when we were kids Mm. So if we don't address those things, how do we push through those blockages to get mm. to where we're trying to go? Mm. So it was that journey for myself that made me pivot with the podcast. Okay. Because I was like, I have questions. Yeah. And the curiosity in me was like, okay, I know I'm not the only one here. Mm. And as much as I was sharing my story before and getting others to share their story, mm -hmm. okay, you know, when it comes to those deep things, mm -hmm. some people don't want to talk about their traumas. Some people yeah. want to pretend they don't have any. Yeah. Okay. Because they think that they're the only one going through it. They're ashamed. They're embarrassed. Mm. But when you hear publicly someone else who isn't ashamed or embarrassed talking about their story. It empowers you. It empowers you. Mm. Then my DMs start to flood. Oh my God. I can't believe this person has my story. I went through the same thing. Yeah. Now I feel like, okay, I can get out of it. Mm -hmm. So it it transitioned into something a lot deeper than wow. what it originally started as. It's cool. It's cool to see how it, how it's like this living and breathing thing that just like evolves over time. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. so cool. It's like group therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hey, like that's, that's really what it is, right? It's like the conversations that we're, we're, yeah, it's just conversations that need to be had. Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you reach out and be like, Hey, like, let's have a conversation about something deep. Like you, you don't really, kind of like do that in normal conversation yeah you know and packaging it and sharing it in a way that other people can consume it i think just gives people a hope and something that they could you know subscribe to that yes. they actually enjoy that they feel like they're a part of too yeah so it's been really cool how has it changed your life and like the connections <laughs> in your community so in terms of changing my life <sighs> i think it um it magnified therapy. <laughs> okay. I think it magnified my results. Um, results? What do you mean? It, I think my 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 healing results. I'm mm, gonna say, okay. um, I'm goal driven. I okay. need a goal. Yeah. Um, so as I was going through my own healing, mm. I was like, this hurts too much. I like I need to speed this up. But you can't speed something up without doing the work, 100%. right? So going to therapy every two weeks. Yeah, you're having this one hour conversation every two weeks. Too slow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So with the podcast, mm -hmm. every week I am having these conversations, but then it's not just the conversation with the guests that I'm having it with every week because now it's sparking other conversations. Mm -hmm. So then there's, you know, healing conversations happening in my DMs and then people see me and then they're like, oh, I listened to this episode. So it, it creates this cycle of deep mm -hmm. conversation. So I'm mm -hmm. surrounded now by deep conversations. So I'm having deep conversations yeah. every day yeah. instead of these surface level conversations. Wow. That's so cool. And it, it's probably crazy to see like all the things that have happened in your past. Now lead up to this one moment and it's like, wow, like, this wouldn't have happened if this didn't happen. And this wouldn't have happened if this didn't happen. Exactly. Like you were mentioning before that butterfly effect. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Like, That's super cool. I think if I had not been doing my own healing work, mm. I could have very easily been resentful or angry about mm. things that have happened in my past. Hmm. But I can openly talk about a lot of my traumas. Wow. And I can openly say that there's gratitude there for mm -hmm. those things because it's given me the life that I have now. It's mm -hmm. allowed me the connections that I have now. It's allowed me um, even to have the relationship with my kids that mm -hmm. I have now. Wow. So if I had kept my healing journey private, if oh. I had kept my traumas private, if I had never shared my story, I probably would not have been as healed as I am now, mm -hmm. even though there's so much more to go. Yeah. But I probably wouldn't be where I am now. Which which trauma are you most grateful for? <laughs> I 
I am going to go with, so I had a, a, a breakup in 2019. Okay. And that helped me basically open up Pandora's box mm. where the breakup itself was probably the most painful breakup I'd ever experienced. And I thought to myself, I was only with this person for two years. How, how does this hurt so much? Like mm -hmm. with my kid's father's eight and a half year relationships, both of them. Yeah. It didn't hurt like this. Mm -hmm. Like what made this hurt so much? Um, and it forced me because I got questions to understand. So not only did it force me to understand myself, but it forced me to understand how people function. It mm. forced me to understand like, I'm going to say different trauma responses. And instead of, being completely angry and saying, well, the way that this person dealt with this, like they're just pure evil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that was their fight trauma response. Mm. They're hurting. Mm. They're, they don't know how to process their hurt. Mm. They can't handle the depth. So they choose ghosting. Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah. helping me to understand. And I think that gave me more compassion <laughs> mm, for people okay. around me. Um, but I feel like I've learned the most amount of lessons through that because in my in my desire to heal and not feel that type of pain mm -hmm. i got really comfortable with change mm. and it was part of my healing process i needed to change everything because it was triggering memories i needed to change where i lived i needed to change my car i need i got rid of my furniture like scrapped everything mm -hmm but it also changed my business. It also changed my mindset. It okay. changed my focus. Okay. Um, and I actually, I did an Instagram story a couple days ago and I said, you know, a few years ago, because of the people that are, I was around, because of the unhealthy relationship that I was in, I questioned my ability as a coach. I questioned my ability as a parent. I questioned my, my friendships. I, I questioned a lot mm -hmm. because I didn't feel safe. Wow. Now that I've gone through this healing journey and I'm in a relationship that I feel safe, mm -hmm. I'm confident that I'm an excellent coach. Mm. I'm confident in what I do. Wow. I'm confident in my, my parenting skills. Mm -hmm. I'm confident in my ability to hold space for other people. Hmm. So that traumatic situation yeah. built this person. Wow. It's crazy that like all, all of this leads to confidence or lack thereof. You know, like so much the the relationships that exist around our life impact our life in ways that we can't even see until we're necessarily out of the storm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was having a conversation with someone the other day and I can't remember what we related it to, but it was like we're in the storm so much that we forget that it's raining. Yes. You know, and it's yeah. like, oh, I don't even fucking, I didn't even know I was wet. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I used to say all the time, it can't rain forever. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's interesting how our connections, both personal and business, mm -hmm. they they can impact our fears and our beliefs. Mm. Right. What, so if you are in a relationship with someone or you are working with people in business mm -hmm. and they are afraid to take steps or they are afraid to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Like I had a, a, a friend of mine explain to me yesterday how she was in a relationship with someone who said he would never travel because, you know, his father came up here from Trinidad. 40 50 years ago yeah. and never went back on a plane and told him about sharks in the ocean he's terrified to travel crazy right but you go around people who travel for a living or you mm. know you meet someone who's a nomad and they talk about all the experiences that they had and how the life that they're getting to live like people lend you their belief or their fears wow you know that saying that you become most like the five people you spend time with yeah think about it. energy is transferable yeah right so even you having these conversations that you have on the podcast, energy is being transferred, mm. right? You're learning mm -hmm. whether it, whether it be, you know, energy from feeling from emotion, whether mm. it be from knowledge, energy mm -hmm. is being transferred. Mm -hmm. Deep. <laughs> so you remember the first time you made a hundred grand in a day? Yes, because that was recent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. all right, all right, all yes. right, spice, spice it up just a little bit. Let's hear yes. it. So okay. how, how did that even come to be? You know, like it's crazy. Did, hold on, no. First question: um, When you were a single mother, going through all this shit, you know, I'll call it what it is, right? Going through this shit. Did you ever think you'd get here? No. No. All right. No. Unfortunately, I did not. Glad what that changed? I did. 
belief. I, I think I, I've shared this before, like even when I didn't believe in my ability to be a coach, mm. I had to borrow Bob Proctor's belief in me. Mm. He believed I could do it. Shout out those who lent it to us interest exactly. free, you know? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, the transition, um, it was, we're in 2023. Okay, so going into 2023, Okay. I had decided I no longer wanted to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm. I was like, even though it's supposed to be personal and business development, mm -hmm. because of the journey that I'm on and because me being an empath, I, I'm automatically a safe space for people to share stuff. People just random people always want to tell me stuff, yeah. deep stuff. Yeah, yeah. Clients were telling me stuff that was very heavy. Okay. And it's not like at the end of the Zoom call I can be like, yeah. No, you that's carry, off my mind. You carry that shit. That's the I'm vibration carrying. that you're exactly. You the energy, energy is being bored. transferred, okay. right? So I'm like depressed for the rest yeah. of the week. <laughs> so I was being. I was having a lot of energy yeah. <laughs> exchange that was putting me on a lower vibration. So mm. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I said, I want to do corporate clients. Okay. I want corporations to hire me to mm. do group training. Mm. Same type of personal business development, mm -hmm. but I don't need to know everybody's personal <laughs> business to yeah. do so. Yeah. And manifestation, the way it works, because I set that intention. Okay. If I didn't have it happen to me, I wouldn't believe it myself. Mm -hmm. Um but while I was off for the, the Christmas holidays, because people book online to schedule calls with me, okay. and I had a call booked, and I was like, I don't know who this I is. Who this yeah, is. I don't know who this is, but it says that they want me to do, they want to discuss me facilitating corporate presentations. So I was super excited yeah, yeah. <laughs> to have this conversation in January. Okay. And when I did, um, it was for an organization that they, they wanted to discuss two things. One, they wanted me to do something for Black History Month. Yeah. And two, they wanted me to do um, group um, facilitations. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to know what my rate was. Yeah. And I remember going into the year and I'm like, well, now that I've worked myself up to doing all these things, mm -hmm. I'm no longer doing free speaking engagements. I'm no longer doing all these things unless it's for non for profits. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, well, we just want to do like a and a style, whatever. So I'm like, okay, we're going into the new year. It's virtual. So I'm, I just blurt out a random number. I'm like, it's $5,000. She's like, okay. I was like, there's no pushback, no negotiation. Best client ever. I said too low. <laughs> I said too low. <laughs> Definitely said too low. I think regret every time. Yeah. Like, oh, why'd you say yes? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so I did uh, the Black History Month uh, Q&A. Yeah. They paid me one shot, no problem. And then they booked another call. Mm. And they said, we want to discuss you doing um, group stuff for the company. And they wanted to focus on resilience. So I was like, okay. Um, and because a lot of the stuff that I do, it's related to my story. So I was explaining to them, okay, how does this work with my expertise? Because if you want me to learn something to teach it, yeah. then you're going to have to pay me for that too. Yeah. Um, but basically, long story short, I said to them, this is what I can do for you. Mm -hmm. Um they told me what they wanted. I gave them a six figure number. I actually gave them three separate um, things okay. to choose from, Damn, but they were, high. they were all in the six figure range, yeah. but I gave them three options within that range. Hey. They said yes. Okay. And they agreed to pay it in one payment. So now how does this change your business going forward? <laughs> right? Because like in, at a time you think the only way to get money is real estate, right? And then all of a sudden you start getting exposed to new shit. And then did you start, hold on, didn't you, don't you have a fucking publishing company? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> when, when did that come into the mix? No, no, hold on. But like, you, you know, you start this other company and you start this podcast and then you do this other thing and then this other thing and now this other thing, your beliefs are changing along this whole roller coaster. Absolutely. You know, how does this change you now? Like, where's your, where? I, well, I guess, hey, like, you don't, you don't have to, no, you're I still a baby if you're still pregnant with it. No, like, I feel like, there, so obviously it's completely changed my belief in what's possible. Yeah. But it's changed my belief in what's possible for me. Mm. And it's also built my confidence okay. because going from someone who wasn't sure if I was a good coach, yeah. if I was actually making a difference, but then you're getting not only just the individual feedback from mm -hmm. the people that you're coaching and the impact that's making on them, mm -hmm. but now you're getting the corp, you know, cause they got to do their evaluations and surveys and 
they need to measure everything, right? Mm -hmm. So then they're sending me stuff saying 98% of the people said that they, their lives have changed. So I'm getting like stats. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm actually making a difference here. Yeah. So that builds your confidence, yeah, right? 100%. So now my, I'm gonna say my, uh, my belief in my ability mm -hmm. to continue to do so mm -hmm. has grown. Wow. So easily because I know many people that own organizations mm -hmm. and because of how I've been able to network and who I've been able to be in rooms with, mm -hmm. I know what I can do because mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So not only am I negotiating contract to continue doing this with the same organization, nice. but now I can do it for others. 100%. So I don't have to work as hard. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, our, uh, what, do you, what do you think our community is like stance on coaching is? You know, and, and what was your stance on coaching from the jump? I, let me tell you a story. So I remember it's third year. You know, I got to shout out my guy, Femi. Um, so it's third year university, fourth year university, somewhere around there. And I'm like, after school, I'm, all we're doing is misbehaving, right? My grandparents think we're studying. And so we're at his house and we're, listening and we're watching YouTube. And all of a sudden this ad for a coaching program comes up and he goes, yo, yo, hold on real quick. Watch this. Let me know what you think. Right. And I'm like, so whatever, bro, just about talking to us on YouTube, whatever. Right. And then he, he starts saying, oh, well, I bought the program. I'm like, you what? <laughs> you bought this program from this guy on the Internet? You don't even know this guy? I'm like, how much was the program? And it says thousands, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you don't even have rent next month. You are going to buy this program? Why would you do something like this? Bro, you're such a goofy. I can't believe you would do this, bro. What does this guy know that you don't know, bro? You're a man just like him. You're telling me this guy knows something that you don't. And he goes, yo, here's the password. And I said, all right, I'm not going to knock it till I try it, right? And I do the program. The program changed my life, right? And I'm like, w this is insane. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ever since then, my whole belief on, on coaching and programs and learning from other people has changed dramatically. Yeah. You know, what was your, what was your stance on coaching at the beginning? And how has it, it evolved over time? So at the beginning, I did not believe in coaching, mm -hmm. just like the rest of the black community. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't cause I didn't see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Representation matters. Yeah. Um, and when I started like the example I gave before, where there are other people that I was trying to get as clients, but they're like, Oh, like you're just McKinney, yes. young black girl. Just a regular McKinney. Like, yeah. yeah. But then, McKinney you know, hands? exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then yeah. I get quote unquote validated. Mm -hmm by successful white people mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're hiring me, Yeah. right? So I already know, e even before I got into personal development, mm -hmm. when I went to, I went to college for aesthetics and spa management, okay? okay? I was like the only black girl in the program. Black people were not coming into the spa to get facials and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. They'll pay money for lace front wig and get their nails done. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, they don't have no program for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of trouble in the beginning uh, because my intention was, I want to take this knowledge and bring it back to our community, yeah. right? I'm learning from this rich white man. I want to take it back to the young black people mm -hmm. so we can learn what they know mm -hmm. and get the same results. Mm -hmm. And people are like, I'm not paying that kind of money. Of course not. No. Yeah. So it was a struggle at first getting people to understand investing, not only into themselves, yeah. but it's like, there's this mindset of if it's not tangible, it's not real. It's not real. And then there's, oh, well, if it's not guaranteed results. Well, the results are based on the work you put into it. 100%. So if you're not consistent and you don't take action, yeah. you're not going to get any results. It's not yeah. going to be my fault. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it became too much of a struggle. Mm -hmm. And I think when I partnered with Susanna and it was so much easier mm -hmm. to get people to be like, oh, here's my credit card. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. So do you know what? I don't want to work with people who don't want to do the work. Yeah. And I also don't want to be begging people to take a leap of faith with me. Mm. I want people to feel confident in working with me. Yeah. So through corporate, they have the money. They believe that I can give them the results. Mm -hmm. They're confident in what I can do. Mm -hmm. And they're easily willing to invest in that. Mm. And because if they're 
if their employees don't do well, that mm -hmm. affects their business. Mm -hmm. So their investment in people. In people. Yeah. So I feel like my original focus has shifted a little bit mm -hmm. because you can't help people who don't want to be helped. 100%. Closed minds will not accept new ideas. Mm -hmm. So I am only willing to work with people who want to do the work. Now, what was your initial investment in coaching? To become a coach? Yeah. 20 grand. Would you say it paid off? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> crazy absolutely right? yeah, yeah absolutely nuts right absolutely that's super cool yeah so what's uh so where are you at these days mckinney what type of stuff you got on the on the docket you know what types of shiny objects making you excited i don't like shiny things no. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right all right new glasses get out of here get out of here you're bling it's about to blind me i should have worn my new glasses this interview yeah um, so my focus right now is my corporate clients, mm. um, and also my publishing clients. So, mm. um, two years ago, okay. um, because I was, I was actually helping people publish, mm -hmm. I guess, um, uh, through consultations, okay. doing consulting work. Yeah. Um, and then I had partnered with a, a ghostwriter and she has a lot of celebrity clients and I was publishing okay. the books that she was ghostwriting. Okay. And I realized there were so many people asking me, oh, Mahini, you've published how many books? You yeah. know, all these questions were coming and I was like. I could just start a business and mm -hmm. have, you know, people that work for me and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Okay. Um, so corporate clients and my publishing clients are my focus right now. Mm -hmm. And because I have basically uh, created more time for myself that I don't have to hustle as hard, mm -hmm. it allows me the time to prioritize self-care. It allows me the time to prioritize my relationship, my kids. I'm about to be a grandmother. So it's allowing me <laughs> the peace and the freedom and the connection yeah. that I've always wanted. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, what do you, uh, if you were going to chat with the McKinney that was like at her lowest, which one was, which one was McKinney at her lowest? Was it getting into real estate? Was it 2019 McKinney? Like you've evolved so many times. You've shed so much skin, you know, was it after yeah. family passed away? And like, which McKinney was, at her lowest hmm. that is a very good question i don't even know if i have an answer i feel like every time i have had to recreate who i am mm. i was at such a low point that i didn't think i could get back up wow i think you know, during the pandemic it was probably the beginning of the pandemic yeah. where I, I kind of shifted things, even with the walk of my stilettos. And the focus was resilience mm -hmm. because I didn't even realize how resilient I was until then. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, you hear it for years, people calling you resilient, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel resilient. Mm. Um, so I actually have a tattoo that says resilience is my superpower. Mm. Um, so I don't know which one was at, like every time I feel like I was at rock bottom. Yeah. I felt like I was drowning. If I'm going to be honest, I feel like there was probably I feel like it's almost embarrassing to say even though I've I've said like that trauma was what taught me the most, but mm -hmm. I feel like that was probably the only time I recall having like suicidal thoughts. Wow. So that probably may have been my lowest. Wow. What what would you what would you say to that McKinney now? It doesn't, it doesn't sound like you're in that season oh, anymore. No. <laughs> um, what would I say to that McKinney now? I would tell her that she is not Actually, let me reverse those words. No, I'll start with a negative. <laughs> it's the vibration. Yes. I would first tell her she is enough. Mm. I would tell her that the story that is in her head mm. was not one that she put there. Mm. It was the voice of other people, and it is not true. Mm. I would tell her that she's got this, mm. and I would tell her to remember who the heck she is. Mm. I think that's where I would start. You tell them. <laughs> yeah, where can where can people follow you? I have one more question, but I want them to know where they can follow you first. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I spend the most amount of time on Instagram. Okay. Um, my the personal Instagram, model, Instagram okay, page. No. But her makeup is perfect. It is not. Thank you. No. <laughs> um, my personal Instagram page is the Real McKinney Smith. Okay. Um, and then um, the website, awalkinmystilettos.com. Mm. Mm. They want publishing. It's legacyweavers.ca. Okay. Uh, that's where I spend the most amount of time. No. I want to I say RIP to the people that you lost, your coach, your grandmother, your sister, you know, and your sister was your best friend, you said. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were to tell her all the, all the shit that you've gone through and all the things that you're going through now, what do you think she would have to say to you? I think, I think she's proud of who I've become. I remember when she passed away and every blessing that came after that or everything that I did after that, because remember I asked myself, like, how do I want to be remembered? Mm. All the community work that I was doing, all the accolades and all the things that were happening after that, I would literally be thanking her Mm. because she was my backbone. And when she passed away, I had to find my own. She was my voice. When she passed away, I had to find my own. So it was like, me trying to emulate her qualities mm-hmm. to be a better person. Wow. Yeah. Well, it sounds like she's going to be with you forever. Yeah. What was her name? Andrea. Shout out Andrea, y'all. RIP. Thank McKinney, you. thank you so much. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure having you on the show. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs> Now, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 100 Ways to Make 100K. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with McKinney and I. And yeah. I guess we'll see you on the next episode. Hey, don't forget to uh, comment, subscribe, leave a review, all the things, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.